Did you know that prostate cancer is the number two cause of cancer leading in men? Yeah, number two, after skin cancer. And this is something that has been growing on the past years and it's something that we really need to be talking about because there are signs in which we can do something about it and the treatment could be very very effective but prostate cancer is one of those things in which you really want to go and have an early treatment in order to have a good result so let's remember that the prostate is like a little uh, walnut gland that it's located right in front of the rectum what is the function of the prostate well it helps to give a fluid a liquid that it's going to help with this it's going to get mixed with the semen and whenever help the sperm to be more fluid and it's going to help with all the process of, of conception and pregnancy. It has been said several times that if 100 men could live until 100 years, probably 90 to 95 of them are going to have any kind of prostate cancer. So prostate cancer is something that it's real for almost every man sitting in the planet. But are those men, all of them, going to die from prostate cancer? Probably not. Most of the people that get prostate cancer during their lives when they're 75 plus, they are not going to die from pr prostate cancer because they are going to have some very slowly growing cells inside of their prostate who is really in danger patients that are under 60 or under 65 that have any sign of prostate cancer or any growing of prostate cancer because in young people or in younger adults the, the disease is going to advance very fast and it's going to spread very fast how many people are prostate cancer killing in the united states each year approximately 35,000 people dying from prostate cancer so this is really something that we really need to be talking about okay so when talking about prostate cancer of course there are a lot of myths and those myths are very common so let's go through some of them number one is that only older men get prostate cancer again prostate cancer is going to be almost 100% sure in men over 80, over 85, and of course over 90. But no, the real deal is when men, younger men, and each time we have even younger men getting prostate cancer. That's why this is something that really needs to be screened since age 40. Number two is that prostate cancer always causes symptoms. We're going to talk about the early symptoms, but I really need to encourage you to know that not always prostate cancer cause symptoms or sometimes when it's causing symptoms it's because the size of the tumor might be bigger or it could be growing in a specific area inside of the prostate in which it is not going to give you any symptom at all. The other question is if I get a PSA, a prostatic specific antigen, which is the test that some, some of the times we use to think that someone has prostate cancer or that has a, any disease of the prostate, do high levels of PSA always means that I have prostate cancer? And the short answer is no. It could be, but no. There are benign pathologies of the prostate and that it's just by inflammation in which PSA can go up. The other is that only men with a familiar history of prostate cancer are at risk. And of course not. Like in every other cancer, less than 10%, even less than 5% in some cancers. But most of the people that get cancer, it could be even breast cancer, any kind of cancer. Most of the people, more than 90, 95% of the people don't have any kind of relationship with familiar history. There is also the misconception is that, that dietary supplements can help to lower the risk or to mitigate completely the risk of prostate cancer. And the answer is no. Of course, there are antioxidants. There are things like supplemento. There are things that could help, but they're not going to prevent 100% that you won't get. And the other thing is that people say that always if you get prostate cancer or if you get a surgery for prostate cancer, you're going to have sexual dysfunction. And the answer is maybe it depends on the kind of procedure that you get but not everyone that gets a procedure for prostate cancer are going to have sexual dysfunction and the question also that i've seen a couple of times is that prostate cancer can be contagious and the answer is completely no it cannot be contagious it's not disease that is provoked but any microbe a virus a bacteria a parasite or a virus anything it's not contagious at all so don't worry so before we go deep into prostate cancer, you need, you need to know that the best way in which you can maybe go and check if you have any 
anything going wrong in your in your prostate it's not just by the symptoms that we're going to discuss you can go and check your PSA if you have any symptom or if you have your PSA going up it could be that you have prostatitis which is a an inflammation most of the time due to infections it could be benign prostatic hyperplasia which is a benign growth of the prostate without any cancer or it could be cancer now which are those risk factors for people to get prostate cancer where they could be the age again as you as we age as men as we age we're going to have more relationship or more risk of developing prostate cancer also my race or my ethnicity african american or african people can have more relationship of developing prostate cancer if i have a family history of prostate cancer and there is also genetics some genetics such as the ones we observe in breast uh, cancer patients that have the the gene for the brca2 the BRCA1 uh, genes that have more relationship as they have for women for breast, we could have for men for, uh, for prostate cancer. But now let's go for what we're here for. And it's to see what are the symptoms to know if I might have prostate cancer or not. So the first one is frequent, urgent uh, necessity to go and pee. If you're going all the time, or if you're just resting, being here, chilling, and then you have the urgent necessity to go and pee, this is something that really needs to take your attention. If the flow of, your, of the urine is getting weaker or it's getting shorter in time, or if you have to do any pain or burning while urinating, if you have any loss of your bowel control, again, remember that the rectum is right behind the prostate. So it could mean that something is growing backwards and maybe it's pressing or compressing and you might lose the bowel control. If you have a painful ejaculation, remember that the prostate is involved in the process of ejaculation and is involved in giving part of the fluid, part of the liquid or the fluid of the sperm. If you have blood in your semen or if you have blood in your urine, both could mean that there is something in plain is giving some of the bloody content and it could be very, very, very a warning sign. And if you have pain, in your lower back, in your lower chest, or in your hips, because prostate cancer gives very, very frequent times, gives metastasis to the bones, especially to the bones in your back. And the treatment is going to depend on the stage, on the type, on the kind of affection that it has. Some people just have a very, very little tiny cancer. Sometimes they're 60, 65, 70, maybe, Right now we know that not everyone needs to get a surgical procedure. Some pharmaceutical therapy, it could be chemotherapy, it could be some medications that go and block the androgen receptor, which is the receptor for testosterone, so they lower in the way or the growth of the cancer. Some need a procedure that it's a surgical procedure in which they go inside the urethra through the penis and they just take away some of the cancer that it's around and some patients need to be open completely and have the tumor removed and some patients also need chemotherapy and some patients need a combination of everything else and again if you think that you have any of these symptoms you need to go and check your physicians there are ways in which we can determine and know if someone has a prostate cancer there is the digital exam there is the psa which we just talked about there is different procedures that we can do, like in getting a biopsy. There are imaging tests, like an MRI, in which we can diagnose very effectively if something is going on or not. But right now, till now, the best thing that we can do for cancer is prevention and early diagnosis. And when we have an early diagnosis, we are really moving forward into the things that really gives us treatment that could be curative. Otherwise, there is not, not much that we can do after the cancer has spread it and has given other things. There are some other things that we're working, working on. There are some nutritional therapies, immunotherapies and some things, but we'll know. But till now, the best thing is if you have any symptom, please go to your physician and tell him that you've seen this video, that you have this information and that you want to check. How's your prostate? Taking your time of seeing this video and please remember that the best way to support us, it's very easy. It's just here, hit the like button. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. We're doing a great effort to, be, to grow this community and we want to grow it with you. And please remember also to 
hit the bell. So every time that we make new videos, you're going to be the first one to get notified. Thank you guys, and until next time.